this video we will learn about Excel formula basics. Before I take you to the beautiful world of Excel formulas, it is important to understand how formula works and what are its building blocks. Let's get started with what constitutes an Excel formula. Excel formulas are what make a spreadsheet a spreadsheet. This forms the backbone of all the analysis that can be done in Excel. So to start learning formulas, it is imperative that we understand how it is built and what are its constituents. So let me type these three numbers here, 10, 20, 30. Now let me show you very basic things that can be used within a formula. A formula would always start with an equal to sign. So whenever you have an equal to sign, it would indicate that now you would be using a formula. If you do not have it, Excel would not recognize it as a formula. A very simple thing that can be a part of formula is a value. So for example, here if I type equal to 10 and hit enter, this becomes the value of C1. So now it is, again, you would say, why do I need to put uh, an equal to before a 10? I can simply do it. But I am showing you that this is one of the constituents that can be used in a formula. Similarly, another constituent could be text. So for example, if I type my name in double quotes and hit enter, then this name is entered. So you can see that text can also be used as a constituent. The third constituent could be a cell reference. And a very simple example of it would be equal to A1. And as soon as I hit enter, you can see that in C1, I have the value in A1. If I change this value, if I write my name here, this value would change as well. So you can use a cell reference. And the last thing that you can use is an operator. So for example, here I type equal to a1 plus A2 and I hit enter and Excel has done this calculation for me and here this plus sign is the operator and there are multiple operators in Excel in Excel formulas so I can for example use equal to A1 minus A2 similarly I can use other operators so let's see what are the operators that can be used in Excel formulas Here I have a list of operators that can be used in Excel formulas along with their description. Some are really simple that you use in daily life, some such as uh, add addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation is something where you can see 10 to the power 2 or 2 to the power 4. Concatenation is something that would join to numbers or text equal to, greater than, less than, greater than equal to, less than equal to and not equal to. So these are the operators. Now let me show you how each of these works. So for example, I have these numbers here, 10, 20 and 30. Now let me show you how each of these works. So in addition, it is really simple, 10 plus 20 and I'm using the cell references here, 10 plus 20 is equal to 30. Similarly, subtraction again, 10 minus 20 is minus 10. In the same fashion, multiplication and division, if you multiply these two numbers, then you get 200 and if you divide 10, by 20 then you get 0.5 now in case of exponentiation let me write a smaller number here I have written 2 and I would say 10 raised to the power 2 and as soon as I hit enter you can see it says 100 similarly I can also use values instead of cell references this is an important one which is concatenation in concatenation, you use this sign ampersand. So you use your keyboard to type ampersand and you use and you choose the other cell. And when you do this, what it will do, it will join these two values or these could be text. So it would become 1020. And if I hit enter, you can see it has become 1020. Similarly, you can join two names as well. So for example, I have my name and surname here and if I want to join these two cells then I would say this ampersand this and now when I hit enter it joins my name you can see that I have Sumit Bansal uh, without any space if you want to introduce a space a good trick would be just use a space here and again use ampersand so what I, I'm saying is Sumit ampersand a space ampersand Bansal and now when I hit enter it gives me my name with a proper space in between the name and surname. So this is how you can use concatenate. Equal to is a function that would return a logical value. So for example, if I say 10 is equal to 20, which I know is false. And now when I hit enter, it gives me false because this is not correct. But in case I have 10 here, then this would give me true. Let me control Z and go back. Similarly, I have this option greater than. 
again I would go here and I would say 10 is greater than 20 which is again false so I get a false similarly it has less than 10 is less than 20 which is true so it returns a true now I also have this option of greater than equal to so for example uh, let me have this value 10.1 here now if I use this formula this value is or maybe not d1 this value d5 is greater than equal to 10 and I hit enter and it says true but if I change this value to 10.1 again this remains true because this is not greater than but it is equal to so it uh, assesses these two conditions it could either be greater than or it could be equal to if any of this condition matches then it returns a true let me control Z to go back similarly we have less than equal to so I would hit d1 is less than or equal to this value and again this is true if I change this to 9.9 .9, then it becomes false because now 10 is greater than and not less than and in the end we have not equal to not equal to as the name suggests would just compare two values if they are not equal then it would give you uh, a true else it would give you a false so for example if I compare 10 is not equal to 9.9 .9, and I hit enter you can see that this gives me true. Suppose if I go to this cell and I create a formula 10 multiplied by 2 plus 20 divided by 2 multiplied by 10. Now can you predict what would be the answer? so how would Excel execute this function would it start executing from left to right right to left or there are certain operators which are more important and are executed first let me show you what the result is the result is 120 now let's go back and see what happened in this case if I look at it Excel first calculated this part which is d1 multiplied by d4 d1 multiplied by d4 this is 20 then Excel started with this part and this was calculated d4 uh, d2 multiple uh, divided by d4 so d2 divided by d4 is 10 and this was multiplied by 10 so this became 100 and this became 20 now I am able to calculate this because I know that there is an order of precedence I have not added these terms before I have used the multiplication and division operators because there is an order of precedence you can predict what would be the answer and in these cases it is good to know so that you would get an answer that you expect instead of something random so let me show you what is the order of precedence this these are the uh, precedence order number and these are the operators so exponential would get the highest preference if we have something like this if I say uh, 10 raised to the power 2 plus 10 then in this case you would be able to predict that first this would be op executed and then 10 would be added to it so if I hit enter I would know that the answer would be 110 similarly the second order of precedence falls with a division and multiplication so if in a, in a formula there is division or multiplication it would be executed before all these signs the third is plus and minus the fourth is concatenation and the last in this series is equal to greater than less than greater than equal to or less than equal to now what if you want to override these precedents you can do this by using round brackets or parentheses so for example let me take the same example I would say 10 raised to the power 2 plus 10 now in this case what if I want to add these two first and then uh, make it uh, 10 to the power that number so if I have to do this I would use round brackets and when I use round brackets it overwrites the order of precedence so in this case whatever is within the bracket would be executed first and then the order of precedence would kick in so in this case it would become 10 raised to the power 12 as soon as I hit enter you can see it gives me a huge number which is 10 raised to the power 12 similarly if you have a huge formula you can absolutely forget this order of precedence and only use parentheses to make sure that something that you need to be executed first is ex actually executed first because it is in round brackets so this is one way to completely forget about it but anyways it is a good idea to know this order of precedence so that it gives you the answer that you expect 
Now there are two ways you can insert a formula in an Excel worksheet. So for example, let me say I want to insert an average formula here in this cell. One of the ways is to go to the formula tab and within this tab you have this option insert function. You can also use the keyboard shortcut shift F3 and as soon as you click shift F3 you can see that Excel automatically inserts an equal to sign because it now knows that you are going to insert a formula and you can search for the formula. So if you are new to Excel and you do not know the formula that you want to use to find the average then you can simply type the word average here and click on go and as soon as you click on go you can see that this would give you a list of functions that can do this work for you so they can average it for you now it may not always be very accurate it may give you a list of all these functions and you may have to scroll down and see what you want but you would have this these lines here that can help you guide in choosing the right function so in this case I want to choose average I would click on it average and I would click on OK and as soon as I do it it inserts this function and opens the function arguments dialog box this is the dialog box where I would insert the argument so if there is a function it would always have a couple of arguments it could be either a single argument it could be more than one arguments or there could be functions which do not take any argument such as a today function that would simply give you the date or now function that would give you the date and time so average actually has a couple of arguments in it if you see here it has two fields number one and number two and it also has some description below so it says returns the average arithmetic mean of its arguments which can be numbers or names arrays or references that contain numbers and since I've clicked on number one field it also gives me a short description of this argument which says number one number two are 1 to 255 numeric arguments for which you want the average so here I could type a number here I could type a cell reference and I could have 255 of these arguments within one average function and as soon as I type something here so for example I type 10 here it would also give me the formula result since I only have one argument as of now the average is 10 but if I go and type 20 here you can see that the formula result changes to 15 if you're not even able to use the function properly after this window you can also go to the help on this function so if you click on it you would see that Excel opens the help for you if you're using 2010 then the window might look different but again the help would open so this is one way and Microsoft help is probably the best place to learn about Microsoft Excel functions it may go a bit in detail but again I would reiterate this is the best place to work to learn about Excel functions now when I click OK I would have the result and if you look at the formula bar I have the entire formula along with the arguments now this is one way but this is not the most efficient way and people who have been using Excel would agree that the most efficient way would be to simply type equal to and start typing the name of the function so let me show you what happens as soon as I start typing as soon as I type a I have this list of functions this entire list of functions and I can choose what function I want because all these start with A but if I know I want to use the average function I would continue typing I would type V and as soon as I type V it would give me the name of all the functions that start with A and V and let me type average and as soon as I continue to type it would give me filter this list and only give me those functions that start with these alphabets so I know it is average I can simply hit tab and if the function is selected and this is the function that I want to use if I hit tab this would auto complete the function if this is not the function I want to use then I can navigate this list by using the arrow keys in this case I want to use average so I would hit tab as soon as I hit tab it auto completes the function now if you want to go to the help for this function you can simply click on it and if I click on this you can see it opens the Excel help but I do not want to go to the Excel help I want to open the argument box where I can insert these arguments there are two ways to do it again you can click on FX or simply use the keyboard shortcut shift F3 and as soon as you use shift F3 it opens the function arguments dialog box and you can insert these arguments if you do not want to use these arguments you can go and manually so for example let me type again average I hit tab to auto complete the function and here I can manually type these now these could be numbers that I'm typing in so for example 10 and 20 and I hit enter and this gives me 15 or these could be cell references so here I use 10 here I have 10 here I have 20 and I go to this cell and instead of these numbers I would use the cell references so to use the cell references I could manually select one by one I have d1 comma d2 and I close the bracket and hit enter it gives me the right result 
or I can simply select it at one go and it says D1 is to D2 and it would consider this entire range and now when I close the bracket and hit, con hit con enter it gives me the same answer again in this case I had these cell references in this sheet only but you can have it in a different sheet as well so for example here I have another sheet and I have these numbers 10 20 and 30 now if I again go back to the function type average hit tab to auto complete the function and here instead of selecting these I can also go to the another sheet and select these functions so for example I can select these three and you can see here in formula bar you can drag this down uh, you can see here in formula bar it has this entire reference it says sheet 3 exclamation mark c3 is to c5 so this is the convention that Excel follows when you are referencing other sheets and now I would close the tab and hit enter and it gives me the right result because it is averaging 10 20 and 30 so this is how you can use references in a, in an excel formula you can either use values you can use text you can use references if you have a formula in excel you can edit it by going to the formula bar so here as soon as you select the cell you would see the formula in the formula bar and when you select the formula you would see if there are any references that could that would get highlighted in different colors in this case I only had one reference so it is using blue color but if you have multiple references then Excel would use multiple colors so the easiest way is to just go to the formula bar and edit this formula you can also go to this cell directly and double click and as soon as you double click it enters into the edit mode you can also enter into the edit mode by pressing F2 and as soon as you press F2 you see now you can edit this formula so these are the ways you can change a formula or edit it or modify it if you're learning about Excel formulas to know about referencing cell referencing is really really important there are three ways you can reference a cell and in terms of Excel these are these are called absolute referencing relative referencing and mixed referencing let me show you what this means so for example a very very simple example is if I go to this cell and I press equal to and I click on a1 and I hit enter then this is a simple example of relative cell referencing where if I drag this down you can see that the cell references changes and it is now relative to the row it is in and the column it is in so for example here this refers to a1 this cell refers to a2 this cell refers to a3 and so on this cell refers to a10 if I copy this formula if I control C go here and copy this formula this cell would refer to a18 similarly if I go to the right and I go here and I press control V this cell would refer to F1 the reason being that this was referring to a cell which was two cell left to it similarly this is again referring to a cell which is two cell left to it so this is called relative cell referencing when your cell reference changes uh, in relation to where your position of the cell is now let me clean this let me show you an example of absolute cell referencing and absolute cell referencing means that it will not change no matter where you put it and to do that a simple convention is you use a dollar sign and here I would put dollar sign dollar sign would mean that if it is in front of the column alphabet which is a it would mean that this column number would not change if you copy this reference similarly if it is in front of the row number then it means that this row number would not change no matter where you put it so for example now let me click enter I copy this and I paste it somewhere here again if I go and put it into edit mode by clicking F2 you can see it, it still refers to A1 no matter where you put it in this it would still refer to A1 so this is absolute cell referencing where no matter where you put it it would still refer to the same location to it which it uh, referred originally an important trick here is that if you go and click on the cell reference you can change these by clicking F4 so now if I hit F4 you can see that the dollar sign in front of A goes away similarly the dollar sign in front of 1 would go away if I press again if I press F4 again and now it is in front of A and now if I press, press it for the third time it becomes a relative cell reference 
Now what you just saw, uh, a dollar sign in front of A but not in front of 1 or the vice versa, a dollar sign in front of 1 but not in front of A, that is called a mixed reference. So now that we have understood uh, relative cell reference and absolute cell reference, let's go and understand mixed cell reference. Here I have some data set and say uh, I want to do a simple thing, I want to divide all these numbers by 100 and put these here and I want to divide all these numbers by 1000 and put, that, uh, put these numbers here. So to do that I would select 10, divide this by 100 and I would click, I would hit enter. It gives me the right result which is 0.1 but now if I drag this down it gives me the wrong result and I'm sure you would have identified by now that if I check this, since this was not an absolute cell reference it dragged this down so now when I put it down it had shifted uh, by one row here and by one row here but I do not want this value to shift I only want this value to shift so I would do a simple thing I would make this absolute and to do that I would hit F4 once and now when I drag this down you can see that it works perfectly this is 0.1 it is supposed to be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 so these are the right results but what happens when I drag this to the right it gives me 1 but I should be getting 0.1 because 100 divided by 1000 is 0.1 the reason being that now when I made the denominator absolute no matter where I drag this it would always be referring to this cell only and this is not what I want I want that while I drag this down it should refer to this cell but when I go to the right it should refer to this cell which means that I want to make it partially absolute or what they call mixed reference so to do that I would simply go here and if you check this I want this to move across columns but I do not move, want it to move across rows which means that I would want a dollar sign in front of the row number but not before the column number so I would hit F4 and I have what I want now I would hit enter now if I drag this down it gives me the right result and now if I drag this to the right it gives me the right result as well I can again simply drag this down now if you if you go to any of these cells you would see that now it refers to the right cell references you can drag this again to the right I do not have the data so it gives me an error but you can see that it would shift based on these but if you drag this value down it would still keep on referring to this value which means that you have fixed the row number but you have not fixed the column number so this is called mixed referencing now these are very very important in formulas you may want you may have a huge data set and you want to create a cell reference and if you as soon as you drag this down it can completely jeopardize if you do not know how to work with absolute relative or mixed cell references Now as you go forward in this course and learn about a lot of formulas you would notice that and in some cases you have to create really huge formulas which are really really complicated and it may become a bit tedious if it returns an error so for example you might not be able to identify where is the error you may have to revisit the entire formula. Excel has some features that can make it easy for you so for example let me type a very simple formula as of now I'm using a very simple formula because you have not gone through this course uh, but you can have any formula here and this trick would work so I would use sum and I would add these two plus I would use sum again add these two and then let's use average and add these three now when I hit enter this gives me the result as 160 if for example this is not the result that you expect or if there is an error in this result then you can check where the error is by going to the formula tab and within this go to the formula auditing option and here you have this option evaluate formula and as soon as you click on evaluate formula you would see that evaluate formula window opens up with the entire formula in this part which says evaluation now click on this button once and it would give you the result of the first part of your formula when you click on evaluate twice it gives you the result of the second part and similarly when you click on it and again and again keep on clicking on it it would keep on doing these operations for you and you would see that this is the result and now again if I click evaluate this is the final result now for example there is an error and let me purposely introduce an error let me purposely introduce the error here is only so I would say I want to divide this number by 0 now I know if I divide any number by 0 it would give me an error so here is the error I know it but imagine that if this is a huge formula and you want to identify where the error is go to evaluate formula 
this opens the evaluation evaluate formula dialog box and hit evaluate and as you are doing it you would notice that at some point of time it would say division and you would be able to identify that this is the step where you have the error so you would know that the first two steps are working fine but the third step is something where you have the division error let me control Z and go back to the original formula now there is another way of debugging formulas and and this is the way that I prefer because this using this you can really go granular so for example you have this entire formula if you just want to see the result of this part then select it using your mouse or by using the F2 key and then using the arrow keys and press F9 and as soon as you press F9 Excel would evaluate and give you the result of only that part which is selected so now I know that the last part of this formula returned 60 I would control Z and go back similarly I can select only this part and hit F9 and this gives me 70 let me control Z and go back I can select parts of it so I would select this entire part these two parts and I press F9 and this gives me the result so this is a really powerful way of debugging your formulas just be careful of one thing so for example if I go to this formula I select this I press F9 it gives me 60 but remember to control Z and go back to the original formula because if you do not if you uh, click enter then this value 60 gets hard coded in the formula which was not originally there so your formula would go away just be a bit cautious do remember to control Z when you do this so these are two powerful ways to audit your formula or to debug your formula that is it in this video I hope you found this useful thank you and have a nice day